What is going on guys? Welcome to Gregolos TV. In this video, I'm gonna review the Samsung Frame TV. Now I've had this TV for about a year, but they haven't really changed the Frame TVs all that much throughout the years. This is the 2022 edition, and I'll link the newest one down below. And I want to give you my experience of what I like and don't like about this television. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. Now the first thing I really love about this television is it's basically completely flat against the television. You can see I have a, a little frame here that you can choose the color of, which is pretty cool. Now sometimes they have a promotion where you get the frame for free, otherwise you gotta pay for it. I feel like it should be included with the television. It's kind of an annoyance that it's not, but regardless, you can see how flat it sits against the television. I don't have a video of us installing it, but it does come with the mounting of all this, so you don't have to buy anything additional to it. Um, everything's included with it, again, except possibly not the frame. You don't need the frame to hang up the TV. The frame's just an additional piece to it. Obviously, I added the lights, but very cool that you can see how flat, it's not completely flat. There is a little bit of a gap, and I do wish they had something that completely covered it, but at the same time, not too bad. It looks pretty cool. The other thing I love about this television is it's matte, meaning it's not reflective at all. And it's great for what you get with this TV, which you can see you get these little painting things um, with the television. And this comes off really, really cool the way it all looks. And I can change it if I want. All I gotta do is press to the right on the controller. And why don't we do one of these types of paintings right here where it's kind of like, you know, it looks like it's, they used a knife or something on here. I'm not an expert. But you can see, I have a window to the right here and it's glaring at it, but you really can't see any reflection. It's amazing with reflections. And I don't know if you can tell, but like this literally looks like a painting. It is a painting, but I mean, it looks like it's on here. It looks like if I could touch it, I could feel the paint on it. So really, really nice stuff. I love that it's, again, anti-reflective. The frame, you see where we're going with this because that's part of the whole frame television. Now, one of the things I'm not absolutely completely fond of is their software. It's not horrendous, it's just, I can see why it would be kind of confusing for some people here. Um, I'm hitting the home button and it's, you know, instead of just going home and showing me all my stuff, it brings me here, which I can play games and I've done videos where I stream games on this thing to different devices like a Xbox Game Pass, you can play on here if you hook up a controller. I've played Amazon Luna on this thing, which is another game streaming service. You got Nvidia GeForce Now, Utomic. Um, there's a bunch of games you can play on here streaming without even having anything hooked up. So that was kind of an interesting thing on here. You could stream Fortnite, and again, it just it plays pretty well as long as your internet is, is real good on here. Um, media. Here's your media, and this is probably where you'd want to lie. So you have like basically the bar on the left, and if you never go into it, you'll always be on the media. Let me just mute that. So we're muted right there. Here's the bar of apps that you have, and you can amend this. You can edit the list, and you know move apps around or remove them completely on here. You have your other apps. If you just go into apps right here, these are all your downloaded apps. I just find this confusing a little bit. It's not as streamlined, I feel, as Roku or Google TV or Apple TV. It's like kind of their own thing. There's tons of apps on here that you can get. They basically have every app that you'd want. You got our music and radio apps, which a lot of these <laughs> I haven't even heard of. And that's the same as Google TV. You're gonna have a lot of apps that are crazy, but you still have the ones that you'd want, such as Sirius or Spotify, those are probably some of the most popular ones. Apps to Kill Time, and these are all the, um, looks like these are all their like uh, video streaming apps and things like that, or some of them anyway. Let me go to some highlights here. Here we go, videos. This should show all the big players. So you got Apple TV, Paramount Plus, Direct TV Stream, Crackle, ABC, Showtime. It has, again, there hasn't been anything on here I didn't, I was worried that it had and it didn't have it. You have all the watch for TV for free apps. It has the Roku channel, which is kind of interesting because this isn't Roku, but it's cool that it has it. These are the apps that I have and it's all the heavy hitters that you'd want and all of it works great. Like I'll just go into 
YouTube real quick. It loads pretty quick. The whole operating system is pretty smooth in general. All right, so here's my channel. I'm gonna play an, a video. It's probably gonna show an ad, I would assume. Yeah, it's gonna show an ad to see if we can skip ahead of it. So there you go. You can see the videos look great. You can, you still have the same kind of menu you would expect with YouTube where you can choose the quality, went right into 4K. Again, it looks great, it looks fantastic on here. Beautiful, beautiful looking video on this screen. Uh, and then the apps, like I said, they're, they all run, this is like a smooth operating system. No, no real lag on here and the app selection is good. It's just, I don't love the interface. The interface I feel can be like a little confusing. Let me dive into the art thing right here, which it is a subscription. I believe it's $5 a month if you want the paid version of this stuff. And you can see I have a free trial membership. I believe it's going on right now. I don't know. But yeah, it's like 50 bucks a year or $5 a month. But you can go down towards the bottom here and there are complimentary ones. So you have your complimentary ones down here. If you go into like relaxation, for instance, it should show us some ones that we can choose from and it will load up and it just stays as a static image, which, you know, it looks pretty cool here, but you can set up options on here so that it should theoretically like turn the television off after a certain amount of time. You can see sleep after a certain amount of time. That stuff works, but the, what I've had problems with is the motion detector. It's on the bottom right of the television and it just doesn't detect for me. I have the television kind of in the corner of a room and that could be why, but it just does not ever turn the television off, which is kind of annoying. Um, you can see set the frame to turn off and on automatically as light is detected in the room. So you got like a night mode on here if you want to do that stuff. So there's different features on here, but the feature of the motion detector just doesn't work well for me personally, but the art in general is pretty cool overall. Um, it's pretty neat, but I don't like having a subscription service, but if you, you know, if, I can see why people might like this, you know, you got your Van Gogh stuff, which even for the, um, the, the paid stuff, if I'm not mistaken, you can even just test these out to see what they look like on your television and it will like load up. It's just neat stuff. It's downloading. So yeah, you guys a little bit clearer now. So really interesting stuff on here, you know, for the, these paintings and they'll just stay on your screen. So you have this giant frame. This is a 65 inch television. The quality of the photo is awesome. It's nice and bright. It's beautiful. It looks really nice on here. I don't really have any problems with any of the, the look of it. It just looks awesome. It's really bright. Um, it's saturated. I love it. It looks great. It's one of the best looking televisions in my home. Here's a side view and my window is literally right there and it's open. I'll just turn it a little bit. You can see, and it still stays nice and bright on the sides. You never lose any quality of the picture at all. And now I'm directly, I'm kind of blocking the window a little bit, but you can see it just looks great. It's a great, great looking uh, picture. Now, generally with televisions, you have all your HDMI's on the side or the back of the television. This one's a little bit different. You have one cable that basically goes to a box that you can place around. That way you can really lie that TV flat and not have to worry about fishing any cables or anything in it. It's kind of a nice alternative to how everyone else pretty much does it. And I just wanted to show you the remote real quick. It's really easy to use. It doesn't have a ton of buttons so that you get confused. It does have some buttons down here that will allow you to quick shortcut to Netflix and Disney Plus and Prime Video and Samsung TV Plus. You got your volume up and down. You just push this up and down. You press it in to go uh, to mute. You have your channel button to go up and down. You have your back button, home button, play pause button. You have your directionals to go up, down, left, right, and select. You have a, another button for one, two, three, and go into your settings. You have a microphone here. You have a button right here that allows you to go to your different ports if you wanna switch uh, ports on here, but you have HDMI's and certain apps and things like that. And then you have your power button to turn it on and off. You also, and this runs off of basically Bluetooth so you can use it from anywhere. It has this too, this, I haven't seen this on a remote. It's actually solar. so. It's a solar panel, so if you just leave this by a window or a lighting source, it will power up your remote. I haven't had enough buy one, but 
Um, it does have a rechargeable battery built into it and it charges via USB-C and all my stuff's USB-C now so I just charged it up real quick but again it's really cool that you have this so the remote I would definitely give a thumbs up it's nice and lightweight and uh, looks nice feels premium. So I would recommend getting the TV for a few reasons. If you want a TV that's really flat against your wall that comes with everything that you need, the picture frame part of it, that's cool. I hope if you buy it, you can get it for free and not have to pay like, I think I ended up paying like $129 for this like, the frame which is basically a piece of plastic. It's way overpriced. The picture quality is great. It's a nice matte screen, but it gets nice and vibrant and beautiful. The quality of the picture is amazing. Speakers are a little lackluster, so I'd recommend getting a soundbar. I love the Sonos stuff, so I'll link the, what I use down below. It works fantastic on here. Operating system, it's okay. It's, it, it can be a little bit confusing. I don't like it as much as Roku or Android TV. Um, would it stop me personally from buying the TV? I don't know about that because you can always take that and just plug in an Apple TV or a Roku or a Google TV and bypass that completely. But again, it's not the end of the world. The Samsung TV stuff has all the apps that you're gonna probably want, all the mainstream stuff that you want from music and movies and all that kind of stuff and gaming. So if you wanna pick it up, it's linked down below. There's a, more, a lot more positives about this than negatives. It's a really cool, interesting television. It's one of the only that I know that you can easily buy. And if you can get a good deal on it, which you usually can at Samsung, check it out. I'll link it down below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you down the road. Peace.